As parents, you are challenged to make education choices that will guide your child to a successful, independent future. Choosing the right school for your child is an important decision, and we are here to help. We hope you make the choice to submit an application to New Haven Schools of Choice. Good morning, and welcome to our TV show, Launch Into High School. My name is Bria. I'm a student recruitment specialist for New Haven Public Schools, and today we're here to learn about our high schools in our district. This morning, our first guest is Principal Glenn Worthy from James Hill High School. Good morning, Principal Worthy. How are you? Good morning, all. How are you doing today? Good. So today we're here to learn about your marvelous school, James Hills High School, and what are the day-to-day -day basics? Uh, first of all, I'd like to say this, high school is the final transition to adulthood. And as students, you begin separating from your parents and exploring and defining your independence. As a student, you are deciding who you are, what you do well, and what, you do, what, what will you do when you graduate? Let me tell you why Hill House is a great option. James Hill High School is a four-year comprehensive high school. It serves grades nine to 12 and enrollment over 1,100 students. Hills High School offers uh, AP classes, pre-AP classes for grades nine and 10. We have numerous partnerships. We have partnership with Yale, Southern Connecticut State University, New Haven University, New Haven, University of New Haven, and Gateway Community College. Their students are uh, taking courses on college campuses and earning college credits early. We also offer vocational programming. We have culinary, manufacturing, carpentry, automotive, construction, digital printing, business classes, and computer science. So as you can see, we have something for everyone. Yes, you do. And you have happened to answer some of my questions. So some of our questions were asked from some of our eighth graders across the district. Um, the first question is, what is a typical day for a Hill House student? A typical day at Hill House High School is kids arrive at 725. First class begins at 735. And so as you're in class, uh, you'll have six classes that you're, you've gone through per day. You'll be assigned eight classes. Our schedule is a rotating schedule. We have an ABCD schedule. So throughout the week, you'll see all your teachers. Um, um, and that's a typical day for a ninth or a typical day for a high school student. Okay. Our second question is from Bishop Woods, eighth grader. What is your school's philosophy and mission? So let me read the mission statement for you. And then I'll just talk about my our philosophy as a school. James Hill High School strives to create a home that is a welcome, safe, and culturally responsive environment where students have the opportunity to explore college and career pathways. We, the academics, are committed to creating a unified school community with a deep understanding of our diverse social and political identities. Our students will be empowered to become critical thinkers of solving real life challenges in an ever changing world. So my philosophy really, as when I became uh, the principal of Hill House, it was very important for kids to leave us with some kind of credentials or enough credits to go to college, right? Or be college and career ready. So we decided to um, have these partnerships with both Southern and, and, and Gateway Community College. The partnership with Southern is for our kids to get an associate's degree upon graduating from Hill House. The partnership with Gateway is the kids um, to leave with credentials with health and health career pathways. Uh, our kids will have an opportunity to either get a certification in surgical technician or be an x-ray technician or some other health pathways. Um, so this incoming freshman class will be the first class to have the opportunity to do both of those things. A, to be part of the South Connecticut State University's associateship program here at, 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 at Hill House. Okay. Or at Gateway. Okay, our question number three, does your school offer after school programs? If so, what are some of them? Sure, um, so we offer athletics. Um, we off, off, also offer, um, we have a debate team, we have a math team, we have band, theater, yearbook, 
uh, newspaper. We have the Honor Society. Uh, we have what's called eSports, uh, where our kids are competing with other high schools across Connecticut. Oh, cool. I'm going to you answer question number five. So I'm going to jump down to question number six. And the question is, what is the percentage of students that graduate and go on to college? Great question. Um, it is it's not as high as I would like to be. Uh, so right now we have 65 percent of our kids who are graduating. And now those who 65 percent, only 50 percent of those kids are going to college. Um, that's why my hope with the uh, pre-AP program to get more kids in the pre-AP program and get more kids going to college. OK. And question number seven, what is the average class sizes or and or student to teacher ratio? Sure. It depends on which class you're in. Um, the pre-AP classes tend to be smaller. Uh, so it's uh, one teacher to 22 students. The other classes, uh, probably class max at 25 students and one teacher. The uh, vocational programming is where it's, the class sizes are also small. Okay. So it seems like Hill House has a lot going on over you over there. You guys are doing some excellent things. I can't wait to see how the end of your school year turns out. I thank you for joining us. And if you guys would like to learn more about Hill House, visit our website at newhavenmagnetschools.com. Mr. Portable Worthy, it was great interviewing you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Welcome. Good morning. MRT. Good morning. Amy, welcome to my TV show. How are you? Um, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about co-op. Hi, I'm uh, Amy Migliori. I am the arts director and one of the assistant principals at Co-op High School. We are a 9 through 12 high school that serves inter-district students and New Haven students who are interested in the arts. So we are an arts magnet school, performing arts school. Yes, we have a few questions that were asked by our eighth graders across the district about co-op and why it should be one of their choices. The first question is, what is a typical non-virtual day for a co-op student? And this was asked by Caleb over at Edgewood. All right, Caleb. So you never know what will happen on a typical day at co-op. Um, as we walk down the halls, you might see students singing, dancing, writing, playing instruments, conducting with their peers, sculpting, painting, recording, acting, directing, writing. Students leave the building to visit organizations like the Schubert Theater to see performances or concerts. They go to the Yale University Art Gallery each week as freshmen in the visual arts department to take art classes and workshops. Students take classes at Gateway Community College, um, and students even go to the Yale Rep to see a play. So there never is a typical day at co-op. There is no such thing, but we like oh, it that it's way. It's always so, so exciting over there. <laughs> Our second question is, what are the different art courses or programs do you offer? So when you apply to co-op, you have to choose an art major. So we have five. Um, we have five categories. So the first is visual arts. So you would apply to visual arts if you're interested in painting, drawing, mixed media, sculpture, ceramics, film or video production, graphic design, Photoshop, fashion design. That's our visual art department. We have a theater department also. So students learn about acting, directing. We have a dance department where students will engage in all different types of dance. We have a creative writing department where students will write stories, poems, prose. We have the music department, which is a little bit more, um, which has three sections. So our strings department, which are orchestral strings. If you play the violin, viola, cello, or upright bass, you would apply to strings. If you are in the band, that is all the other instruments. We are not a marching band. We are a concert. Like and the jazz flute. Band. I used to play the flute in middle school. Yes, like the flute, clarinet, tuba, trombone. Um, we actually had a student this year who plays a euphonium. Um, I wasn't even sure we had one of those, but we do. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then there's choral music, which is only voice, uh, no instruments. So okay. that's another option for students and percussion. So the percussion is also another smaller. We we usually admit two or two students, I think, per year to the percussion. Mm. Co-op has a lot to offer us. We um, do. Our question number three, does your school focus more on the arts or do students spend time on the academic part too? And this was asked from Aaron over at Ross Woodward. Aaron, we have the academics, we have the arts, we have it all at co-op. We um, 
we offer obviously all of the arts classes. So you will get, you will have to earn eight credits in your art, but you also have to take all of your academic courses all under our roof. So you will take your math, you will take your sciences, you will take your English, you will take your social studies and history courses. Um, all of those under under one roof during the school day. You can also take a, advanced placement courses, college before college, um, ECE. So those courses all you can earn college credit in high school. So our academic program is actually very robust in addition to the arts. So you will take all of those things, including world language, all the things that you would take when you were, if you were in a regular comprehensive high school. We just offer a concentration in the arts. Yes. Well, it seemed like you guys got to be pretty focused to be at co-op. That's a lot going Very on. Very focused. Very focused. My favorite question is number five. What makes your school special? So I think co-op is special for a lot of reasons. Um, I think first it's special because of our students. So we have students from a lot of different backgrounds, which is something that makes our cultural component really robust. So we have a lot of representation from different towns, different cities, um, from all different parts of New Haven. We also have a really dedicated staff, a lot of staff who are working artists in the community. We have a lot of people who have lots of things that they can offer our students. Um, we also have performances quite a bit. So we you know, for the students who are in the performing arts, mm -hmm. you know, you'll be on a stage in front of your peers and the and the public multiple times per year. So if you're okay. in the dance department, you'll be you'll be dancing on us on our stage. Right. If you're in the theater department, you have shows in our black box. If you are in music, you have concerts. In creative writing, you have readings. In visual art, you even perform because we have film festivals and um, art gallery openings. So we actually have an art gallery in our school. Um, and we have openings there. So those are that art cool. gallery is cool. It is. It is. It's really cool. So we also have an after school program. Okay. So we, we have an opportunity for students who are in one art to take take advantage of being in some of the other arts. So we have kids okay. who are in the choir who then will take ceramics in after school programs. So there's lots of different ways for students, even though they're in one art major, mm -hmm. we have, we encourage them to stay in that major. We really don't switch kids. Um, we have other opportunities for them to engage in the other arts in their after school program and with um, events for our community partners, with our community oh, pretty partners. Pretty cool. Um, our question number six, what are careers some of your alumni have gone into after graduating? Yeah, we have a lot of uh, really impressive um, alumni who have gone to co-op, and I'm not going to start name dropping, but I'll just give you some of the. Um, I want you to name drop. I'm I'm so I know one of them. them. I know one of them. Not my students, but I we have a multi Grammy winner, a Latin Grammy winner, um, Marco Sanchez. He yes. actually did um, a music video with our students um, for Hispanic Heritage Month, which was awesome. It's on our website if you want to cool. check it out. So he knew we were doing this project and he just jumped in and, and provided like a, a video of himself playing. And so he did a collaboration with us. He also has hosted workshops for the kids so they could see his his house, which is actually his studio. Wow. There were people working. Um, there are several people who graduated from our school who are working on Christina Aguilera's newest album. We have a very established uh, Netflix executive Okay. We have a woman who works for Disney who actually, my son watches her show. Uh, she created a show on Disney Plus and um, cool. the kid, she also did a workshop with the students about, you know, her successes and, you know, they watched the show and she talked about character development. It was really interesting. We have, um, a, we had a student who went on to compete in The Voice. So, um, and then we have kids that don't go into the arts and that's okay because the yeah. arts teaches us lessons Correct. that we can carry with us throughout our lifetime. I mean, we have kids that have gone back to school to become teachers, um, but we also have kids that just have taken what they've learned and, and gone and been good humans in, in the future. So that's okay too. And that leads us into our last question. What are some interests or skills students should have if they are interested in co-op? Yeah, so we need a willingness uh, to participate in the arts um, because students who apply to our school, like I said before, they have to apply to an art major. So if you are mm -hmm. placed in visual art and you don't want to be in visual art, 
you're not going to be very happy when 90 minutes of your school right. every single day <laughs> right. is spent in that art. So it's really about finding the, if this is the right school for you. And we really encourage kids to come to our open houses and families and ask questions and reach out to us and, and look at our website and our social media because we want to find students who are the right fit. So we want kids that are obviously really interested in the art they apply for. Um, and are willing to try. You don't have to be a, a great visual artist, right. but you have to be willing to put yourself out there. And that's something that we think is really important because we just need kids that are really willing because we have teachers who are so eager to shape right. students. Um, we really need kids who are eager and willing to participate and have that interest. Um, and also kids that are academically sound and that can manage multiple um things because there's so much going on at co-op it's really easy um it's really important for kids to have really good time management skills yes. because we know that you know rehearsals and our school musical we we actually are doing a musical now it's virtual but you know so kids are rehearsing you know nine hours a week um after school to be in the musical so if ki we want kids to take advantage of that but we need them to be able to manage their time well enough um you know and be willing to do all those things Great. Well, make sure you share your virtual musical with us so we can put it on our blog. Amy, we thank you for joining our TV show. Any more questions about co-op, check out newhavenmagnetschools.com or co-op's own website. Thank you. Thank you. Our next guest is Principal Eva Johnson over at Wilbur Cross. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Good, thank you for joining our TV show. Can we hear a quick synopsis about what it's like at Wilbur Cross? Well, Wilbur Cross, we are the largest comprehensive high school in the city of New Haven with approximately 1,600 students enrolled, 118 teachers, seven counselors, six administrators, and a wealth of support staff. Oh, you guys so, are pretty large over there. I'm sorry? So you guys are pretty large over there. We are the largest. We are Wilbur Cross, hashtag Cross Pride. <laughs> Um, oh, so you answered our second question. How many students at San Wilbur Cross? And that was asked by Madison over at Worthington Hooker. Hi, Madison. Our third question is, Wilbur Cross has four academics. Can you tell us more about each of them? So we have four academies at Wilbur Cross. Um, the academies came out of a grant that we got several years ago because we realized that we were the largest high school and it was very easy for students to kind of get lost in here. Mm -hmm. So after uh, two years of research, we followed the smaller learning communities model where we have four what we call academies, okay. law and public service, business and fine arts, health and culinary sciences, and International Academy of Digital Arts. Essentially, for each of those academies have a specific pathway that's their theme. They're what we call themed academies. So no matter when you come to Wilbur Cross, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, everyone's gonna take the same English, math, social studies, and science classes. Those are the core classes you have. So if you have a really strong interest in science, you may wanna select the Health and Culinary Sciences Academy. If you have a really strong interest in acting or music or the fine arts, you may wanna choose um, the Business and Fine Arts Academy. If you already know, um, oh, I, I'm interested kind of in law. I like to watch Law and & Order and CSI and those kind of things. You might want to select the Law and Public Service Academy. So, and we have very specific classes. They're called electives, which are like your specials in middle school, um, if you have an interest. Now, what if you're sitting here going, I don't know what I want to do. I'm 14. I don't know if I want pizza for dinner. Right. Why are you asking me? What do I want to, what, how do I know what I want to do when I'm an adult? That's okay too. If you're not sure, you can just select an academy. And the good thing about it is you can take those electives and sometimes they help you because you go, oh, you know what? I'll take this elective. I'll take, um, uh, I don't know, ceramics. And then you might realize not really into ceramics. You might think I could tell you when I was in elementary school and middle school, I used to say, I'm going to be a lawyer. I'm going to be a lawyer. And then when I was in high school, I took a law class and then I realized like, mm, yeah, I didn't realize this is a lot of reading and other things. And that just wasn't my thing. So, you know, the good thing is if you're not sure that's okay, you can just select Academy you think you might be interested in. And then you always have the opportunity at the end of the school year to switch your academy for the following school year. However, let's just say you have two very strong interests. You love to sing or you play an instrument, but you really like science. 
and you don't know whether you want to select the health and culinary sciences um, academy or the business and fine arts academy. Mm -hmm. The cool thing about that is if you play an instrument or you love to sing, you can select the business and fine um, the culin um, the health and culinary academy, but you can still take chorus or band as an elective. So there are certain classes at Wilbur Cross that we leave open to all the academies. So like our bands, um, our, our all of our world languages classes, our music classes, our chorus classes, those are open to everyone in the school. Okay, I would say culinary is probably our most popular course and program that kids want to take. There's always a waiting list to get into that, uh, into those courses. Cool. Question number four, does your school offer any vocational courses? We do. Um, like I said, we are the largest comprehensive high school. So we have um, print shop. We actually have a running functioning print shop um, that also has um, computer design component to it. We also have a wood shop class. We have an auto tech class. We have a culinary classes um, for that. So those are really great courses that you can you are interested in. And if that's something you want to pursue in college or when you get out of college, you have that opportunity to. In our in our auto tech class, you learn how to change tires, how to change oil, how to rebuild an engine. So, you know, if you already know, like I'm really into mechanics and I like mechanics and I want to do that. We have had students who have graduated from Wilbur Cross. They've gone to tech school, got their certification and are working as mechanics in um, in car dealerships or, own their, or, or mechanics in local mechanic shops. So, you know, we do have that option as well. Okay. Our last but not least question, what honors or advanced placement classes do you offer? We offer a ton. So we have honors classes for all of our courses for English, um, English, math, science, social studies. We offer honors classes in mostly all of our um, core courses. We also have about 15, 15 to 18 AP courses that we offer depending on the year and the enrollment. So we don't always offer all 18. It depends on how many students enroll in those classes. As ninth graders, you cannot take an AP class, but as 10th graders, 11th graders, and 12th graders, you can. Okay. Seems like Wilbur Cross has a lot to offer our incoming freshmen. We hope that this is one of your schools on your placement application. Principal Johnson, thank you for sharing with us. No problem. Thank you for having me. I look forward to seeing you guys at our open house on February 3rd and February 10th. I think those are the dates, but make sure you check our website. <clears throat> um, please make sure you check our website um, for those exact dates. And I look forward to seeing you virtually. And if you have any questions, you can always call us at 475-220-7400 or email us at cross at nhboe.net. I look forward to meeting you guys sooner than later. Thank you, Principal Johnson. Bye. Our next guest is from HSC, Diana Carter, and two of her wonderful students. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. How are you? We're doing pretty good. Good. Um, we're going to start with Diana introducing herself and letting us know a little bit about HSC. Thanks. So I'm Diana. I'm the magnet resource teacher at HSC. It's actually my seventh year at HSC. It's a really, really special school. So HSC is the small school for students who want to do big things, right? So like we're a small school. There's less than 300 students at HSC. So you're known. You can't come to HSC and not be known. The teachers are going to get to know you. The administrators are going to know you by your first name. Even we give you our first names too. So yeah. when you come to our school, I'm not Mrs. Carter, I'm Diana. And you get my name because we share mutual respect and trust. And because we know that that's really how learning happens. Our theme is leadership, social justice, and public service and policy. And probably the most important piece of that is leadership because we're trying to help you become the next leader of your generation. Yes, I love it. Our first question is going to go to your wonderful students that are on air with us. The first question is, what makes HSC special? Okay, I'm a person. Um, so for me, HSC is special to me as it's different from other schools, I guess. I visited when I was in, ninth, in eighth grade and I went to other schools and stuff. It was different when I came to HSC and I got that score. 
because you are able to put yourself out there and i know like other schools are like that right but i just he actually like brings it out there in a way as like we have like so many things there like also like mo monday which is one of the monday you know you come in usually when we're in school you know we have the music playing during breakfast and you know you get up there and you're like dancing and you know you just get there you can actually go up there you can like say a quote that you want to say that's like special to you or something and you can sing there and it's like so much fun and it's like they get you involved and interacting and it's not like you're just sitting there you're 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 getting up there you're doing something and it, i feel like that's what's special to me is like you're able to actually get up there and do something you know and yeah, especially when you're like nervous. I love your excitement about your school. I love the energy. And what's your what makes HSC special for you, hun? Um, hello. Um, for me, um HSC helped me to grow both in an academic sense and work on that identity as well as a personal sense of identity. Um it gave me the space to feel comfortable as um a student who's um, LGBTQ plus and part of that community. Okay. Um, I was able to come out. Um, it was virtual um, this year, but I was able to do that. Um, and staff and students were both just so kind and wel welcoming to me, um, which I'm just incredibly grateful for. And I know that it's such a it's such a great experience to have a community that's so inclusive and comforting and welcoming. Well, I'm um, glad you got that comfort that you were looking for. Thank you, thank you. Um, so we're gonna begin to ask Diana some questions. Question number two leads into, will HSC help me to be a better volunteer in my community? Absolutely. So because we are mastery-based school, it means we focus on skills. Skills like public speaking, skills like reading, writing, right? And so because we're a skill-based school and we use a four-point scale instead of mm -hmm. A, B, C, D, um, that is going to help you focus on what are the skills that I need to work on and then how can I take action? Um, also, our Craigs are kind of like the way in which we exist in, in HSC. It's compassion, respect, action, integrity, and greatness. Those okay. are the things we really want to instill in all of our students. So if you're working on your Craigs, then you're working on becoming a better community member. Okay, question number three. If I attend HSC, will I only learn about law? And this is coming from Marcella over at Concy West Hills. Thank you so much, Marcella. Awesome question. No, so we do have a theme and social justice is involved in our theme, but that doesn't mean that's all you learn about. It means that that theme is embedded into all of our classes. So you okay. might learn, you might you know, take the, the mute court mute trial court course, right? You, If you want to, you don't have to. Um, you're gonna be talking about leadership and social justice in all of your classes. Okay, question number four. What kind of students are you looking for at HSC? And this comes from Tiana over at Bishop Woods. Thank you, Tiana. We're looking for kids that wanna do big things. We're looking for the next leaders of your generation. We've got you know, some amazing things happening in our country. So we want the kids that are interested in politics and interested in community yeah. and interested in, you know, making the world a better place. Yes. Question number five, what are careers that your alumni have gone into after graduating? Well, we just had a student panel interview an alum from um, just last week. Okay. And this alum, it's super cool. She actually developed 911 for the country of uh, Kenya. They wow. didn't have a 911. Yeah, so she's she's a, it's a startup company. She's managing an app and collaborating with the government to make sure that people who are in emergency actually get an ambulance because before she brought this app to Kenya, they didn't exist. So that's like one example, wow. but. I yeah. learn something new every day because I never knew that. Mm -hmm. Question number six, what is one of the most interesting classes your school offers? Um, I think forensic science is really cool. Um, I had to act one year as like the dead body in the library. Uh, so that's that's a fun one. But I will also say that because we're project based, yes. um, every class ends up being super engaging because you get to have a little bit of choice in what you're learning about. Yes, that's uh, that's good to know. Number seven, what advanced academics do you offer? We actually have one of the most uh, AP classes than, than the other small schools of our size. We have eight 
Yeah, we have AP, eight AP classes that we offer across the board. So that's AP Environmental, AP Calc, um, so on and so forth. But then also we have a partnership with Gateway Community College where even a ninth grader can take college classes at Gateway. And so there's a special HSC Gateway course that's taught every semester, as well as, you know, typical partnership with Southern and Yale and Gateway for traditional college classes too. Cool. It seems like HSC has a lot going on. We hope that the incoming ninth graders choose your on their application for this upcoming lottery. We ask that you visit their open houses that they have coming up on their website. Join us for our virtual um, school tour that's coming up on June 30th. And visit our website at newhavenmagnetschools.com where you can learn more about HSC. Thank you guys for sharing. Thank you. Hi, I'm Marquel Middleton, Director of School Choice and Enrollment for New Haven Public Schools, and I'm here to give you eight tips to navigate the school choice process. Tip one, you do not need to apply through the school choice process if your child will be staying at his or her current school next year and the school offers your child's next grade level. Tip two, rank truthfully. This means rank the schools in the order that you like them. Do not rank the schools based on how hard you think it is to get into them. Tip three, only list schools on your application that you would consider sending your child to. However, also know that listing too few choices may result in less likely placement. Tip four, this year you can list up to six schools on your application. For some, six might be too many and one may be too few. Tip five, leave yourself time to explore and make a list of schools that might be a good fit for your child. Remember that some schools offer different curriculum themes. Tip six, visit open houses for the schools you are interested in. Tip seven, if your child is new to the district, you must register your child for school. Tip eight, the steps are easy. Explore, apply, accept, and register. If you still have questions, please visit the Office of School Choice and Enrollment at 54 Meadow Street, New Haven, Connecticut, or contact us at 475-220-1430. Thank you. Good afternoon. Our next guest on the show is Principal Blue and Ms. Alice Coleman from East Sims. Hi, guys. Hi guys, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Good. Please introduce yourselves and tell us about ESIMS. I'm Medria Blue Ellis, I'm the principal of ESIMS. I am Alice Coleman and I am the magnet resource teacher here at ESIMS and I'll be in touch with a lot of you as you uh, learn more about our school. Cool, what is something special about ESIMS that we should know? Okay, so Engineering and Science University Magnet School is an interdistrict college preparatory middle and high school. So we focus on um, a STEM theme. STEM is a curriculum based on the subjects of science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, and we do accept students beginning in sixth grade. And although we are a high school uh, serving students through grade 12, we typically accept high school students up to grade 10 because of our unique graduation requirements. So that's something you should know. Um, math, math, math. Um, math is a subject that uh, most of our successful students love uh, because math is at the basis of our curriculum throughout all subjects taught at ESOMS. Graduation requirements of calculus or statistics prepare our students for challenging STEM programs at the collegiate level. Um, as engineering is a course required for all students grades six through 12, a full four credits of engineering, so that's every year engineering is required to graduate with the ESOMS diploma. Um, one more thing I should let you know, um, ESOMS students come from a wide variety of races, ethnicities, and backgrounds which is very rich in diversity, and it adds to the culture of learning uh, that celebrates the differences that makes each individual here very unique. 
So a constant consciousness on equity allows for all of our students, regardless of background, to let their passion lead their learning. So ESOM students are continuously encouraged to imagine, investigate, and invent with the goal to one day lead the world in innovation. We have questions that were asked from eighth graders across the district, and the first one comes from Clinton Avenue. If I am accepted to ESOMs, how will the school prepare me for college? What a great question. If you're accepted to ESOMs, you will definitely be prepared for college. ESOMs has among the highest percentages of students who persist in college, according to the state. Our average is higher than the state, higher than many schools in the district. And that is because we offer many courses that are advanced and will prepare you. Okay. Question number two comes from Samantha at Nathan Hill. How long are the classes at ESOMs? Samantha, the classes in the middle school are 50 minutes and in the high school, 90 minutes. Okay. Um, question number three, what are some careers that your alumni have gone into after graduating? Our alumni have gone into several different fields. Many of them go into the STEM fields, which are engineering, science, technology, and math fields. Mm -hmm. They also major in business administration, politics, um, and in the medical field. We have quite a few students who are pre-med and who are also majoring in nursing. Cool. Great, great, great backgrounds to get into. Our third question is, what is one of your most interesting classes your school offers? Wow, I think that's another great question, and it really depends on the student. Many of our students enjoy courses such as flight instrumentation. In that class, they might build drones, ordering all the different parts that they need, designing a drone that can accomplish a specific task. Some students really enjoy the robotics classes, but quite frankly, many of our classes are really, really exciting. Our science, our physics, um, our classes are hands-on and minds-on, 3D modeling. Uh, we have a robust business and technology department in addition to our engineering department. But we're very proud of our humanities classes as well. Many students enjoy our social justice classes and um, our state our regular classes that are required for state graduation as well as the district. Okay, question number four. What are some interests or skills that students should have if they are interested in your school? I guess one of the main skills that you need to have is a willingness to um, persist, not to quit, and a true interest in STEM. So you can develop that interest if you don't have it. But as Ms. Coleman had shared earlier, definitely it, you're at an advantage if you are excelling in some math classes or even really enjoying those classes and you're trying and you know that like you're, you're gonna stick with it. You're gonna persist and you're gonna be inquisitive. You're gonna work with others and just keep going. And our last but not least question, what advanced academics do you offer? Wow, great question again. And we have, 11 advanced placement classes, AP classes. We also participate in the UConn ECE program, some of our history classes and our English classes award dual credit, and we're even expanding that. Uniquely, we offer the Project Lead the Way engineering um, track. And so those classes that students begin in grade nine, if students pass an end of the year exam, they are awarded college credit from the University of New Haven. We participate in the College Before College program with the district where our students take classes at Yale, Southern, and Gateway. But uniquely, um, ESIMS offers college classes on college campuses in grade 10. We're the only school in the district where you can take cl college classes on a university campus in the 10th grade. And that is at the University of New Haven because we're physically on that campus. Okay. This year, we're also proud to announce that we have 50 high schoolers who are earning college credit in a course that is um, designed by Yale, led by one of the famous Yale professors, a happiness course. And the course is being taught in conjunction with UConn professors and TAs and one of our staff members. But students who complete that course successfully will receive college credit from UConn. 
Oh, it seems like you guys have a lot going on at eSIMS. What was eSIMS when I was going to school? <laughs> um, thank you guys for sharing with us on the show. Visit eSIMS on their website. Also check them out at newhavenmagnetschools.com for, for more information. And we can't wait to see you guys at the fair. Thank you. Thank you for all that you're doing. Thank, thank you yeah. for considering eSIMS. And we want you to choose eSIMS. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Good afternoon, guys. Our next guest is Mr. Greg Bowen over at New Haven Academy. How are you? I'm good. Um, so tell us a little bit about New Haven Academy. So New Haven Academy, we're a small school on purpose. We have 300 students, grades 9 through 12, come from New Haven and lots of towns uh, outside of New Haven. Okay. Our focus is preparing all students to succeed in college, be really active citizens, who learn how to make really good decisions for themselves and their communities uh, and commit to what we call social action. So our kids get into college, they prepare early while they're in high school, and they also prepare for life and how they can use their skills to make the world a much better place. Cool. So we have a couple of questions that were asked by eighth graders across the district. Question number one, what is a typical day for a New Haven Academy student? So New Haven Academy, typically our school day is 8 to 2.30. Uh, we have a block schedule. So typically on a normal day, you, you have four academic classes that meet for about an hour and 20 minutes. Um, and those are hands-on classes. So in science, you're learning how to be a scientist. You're doing real science in action. You're having debates in history class. You're doing role plays in literature. So you have four academic classes. And then you have, uh, on depending on the day, either what's called an advisory group. That's a mm -hmm. team of ninth through 12th graders, so about 16 kids with a teacher. And you become kind of a team and a home base. You meet a couple times a week. And on other days, you have academic support. That's time where you can choose teachers you need to get a little bit more support from okay, uh, and, uh, and get some extra work. So that's a typical day. Oh, cool. Question number two, what is one of the most interesting classes your school offers? Well, I'm going to name two really quickly. So one, we have a unique class called College Bound Seminar. Every student takes a class, meets twice a week for two years, and it's all about preparing for life after high school. So you get credit for figuring out who am I, where am I going, how am I going to get there? So that's built into our program, all the steps to figure out what's my plan for once I get that high school diploma. And the other one uh, is the social action class. It's called Facing History and Ourselves. Okay. It's a unique look at uh, how does individuals like us, in especially in democracies, make change in the world? So looking at history by decisions from uh, normal people, not just presidents and generals, but looking at how individuals can make choices that really change history. So those are two of our kind of unique classes. Love it. Question number three, what are some interests or skills students should have if they are interested in your school? Uh, one of the biggest ones is you got to be able to ask questions. We want you thinking about what's what's happening, why, how did things get to be the way they are, and how do we figure out our place in the world. So asking questions is huge, um, and making arguments is also huge. That's so built into every class. You have to think about what's my opinion, what's my belief, how do I stand up for it, and support it with facts and evidence, uh, and you got to be interested in the world around you. We want to get you thinking about how things work in the world, why things are the way they are. Uh, so having that, not just looking down, but looking up and looking out are, are some important things we want you to be able to do. Cool. Question number four, does New Haven Academy have a diverse student body? And this comes from Lucas over at Edgewood. Lucas, we do have, a, we and we strive to build one every year and every day. So about 65% or 70% of our kids come from New Haven. The rest are from towns all over the place. So ethnically, we're really diverse. We have uh, kids of most e ethnic backgrounds mm -hmm. with us. We have kids uh, that are pretty wealthy, kids that are struggling economically that come together. We have uh, gay, straight, questioning kids come together. So we really are a small community that believes in diversity as strength. So we want to bring kids who are different together and get them thinking and talking about it. And we do that in, in lots of interesting ways. So we're always not only hoping to be diverse, we're really trying to be diverse and take advantage of that. Cool. Well, Lucas, I hope that's a great fit for you. Question number five, do your school offer students the opportunity to enroll in college classes while a student at New Haven Academy? We do. Uh, that's a big part of our program. So, so uh, kids have the opportunity to take classes. Uh, we have a couple partnerships with Quinnipiac University, 
with Southern Connecticut State University. They're a little bit unique to us. Kids can also take classes at Gateway Community College, uh, Yale University, University of New Haven. We've had kids as early as spring of their freshman year in high school start taking college classes. And we have, I would say, almost half of our graduates in the last several years have, have finished high school with college credit, haven't taken a class. Some of our kids have actually graduated college early because of all the credits they've earned uh, while they're in high school. And that college-bound seminar class I talked about is a place where we also support kids to make sure they're, they're managing college well and kind of learning, learning what it's about. Cool. Seems like New Haven Academy has a lot to offer and they're definitely getting you prepared for college. You can visit more. You can learn more about them on the website at newhavenmagnetschools.com. Make sure you visit their open houses if that's a choice for you. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. Have a good one. Take care. Our next guest is Principal Sean True over at Hill Regional Career. Hi, welcome, everybody. Nice How are you, you? Principal True? Um. We're going to ask you if you could share a little bit about career. Sure. Career is a tremendous school. It's, a, it's an outstanding school. It's a magnet school. Um, it services students from New Haven and roughly 23 other surrounding districts. Uh, we roughly have about 650 students currently. Um, and we specialize um, in our two magnet platforms, the, uh, the medical field, yes. um, health and sciences, and then business technology. So we're really, really excited. Um, just about under 25% of the students come from outside of New Haven, such as West Haven, Hamden, North Haven, and such. So uh, we're really excited. We have many great partnerships uh, with the community, uh, one including Yale New Haven Hospital and such. So uh, if uh, health sciences and business technology is what your interests are, then Hill Regional Career High School is the school for you. Yes, we love to hear it. We're going to get into some questions that were asked by eighth graders across the district. The first question is, what is a typical day for a Hill Regional Career student? Sure, great question. So typical day for a Hill Regional Career students, are, our hours are from 745 to 215 every day. Okay. Uh, we have four classes. Um, each of them is block scheduling, so they last about 85 minutes per class. And we uh, divide it to an A and B day, uh, A, B rotation. Uh, all students take about eight classes each year, and four classes are held on A day, and then the remaining four classes are held on the B days. Um, so, and then we also have uh, uh, every Wednesday we have advisory uh, that is usually held during first period for about 45 minutes. Okay. And then classes then on those days are then pushed back to last 73, 73 minutes on those uh, particular days. Okay. Question number two, what are some careers that your alumni have gone into after graduating? Uh, some of the great careers that our alumni have gone into uh, once graduation are doctors, veterinarians, nurses, entrepreneurs, uh, criminal justice officials, state representatives. Mm. Um, many of them have established marketing firms. Uh, they go into the uh, information technology fields, IT. So those are just to, to name a few careers. Oh, career have some big things coming out of there. Uh, question number three, what is one of the most interesting classes your school offers? I think uh, all the classes are interesting, uh, to be honest with you. But certainly uh, one, of the, one of the interesting classes are, is our medical response technician or MRT class. This is okay. a first responder certificate course that will allow the students to work with emergency rescue uh, medical personnel. That's uh, a really unique class on the health sciences uh, platform. On the business technology platform, um, uh, really one interesting class is that we offer the computer programming uh, sponsored in partnership with Amazon. Um, so that really gives students a, a hands-on approach and really an experience in the different uh, computer programming and such. So those are really two. All of them are great, but those are just two uh, classes that uh, uh, comes to the forefront right now as being exceptional here at Career. Yes. Question number four. What are some interests or skills students should have if they're interested in your school? Well, students should be interested in our magnet school. They should certainly be interested in the medical and science and certainly be interested in the business technology. Uh, but the students should also, they should have interest in developing career readiness skills okay. uh, through authentic experiences in the medical, science, and business or technology field. 
Uh, they should fulfill his or her civic duty by getting involved in clubs and community offered throughout uh, Hill Regional Career High School. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have opportunities to work with some of the Yale partnerships uh, with students that are on that medical track. Uh, to further business idea as an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, excuse me, in the in the future as a student, and uh, we certainly want to acquire student leader experiences and peer educators and, glu and club officers to really uh, enable our students to be a well-rounded student while they're here at Career High School for four years. Cool. Now, question number five: What advanced academics do you offer? Uh, we have an array of uh, advanced academic classes right now that we offer uh, honors. They include Phi Chem, honors, honors Biology, one Honors Chemistry, Honors Physics. Uh, some of the AP classes, advanced placement classes would be Chemistry, Biology, Physics, uh, English Language, English Literature, uh, Psychology, Statistics, Spanish, U.S. History, World History, U.S. Government and Politics, and Microeconomics. So those are oh, some you guys are giving offer. some cool classes over there. We do. Question number six, what sport, what sports programs do you have? And this comes from Lorraine over at King Robinson. Well, Lorraine, great question. So uh, some of the, the current athletic programs here that we're really, really proud of here at Career High School being a Panther, uh, that would include male and female soccer, boys and girls basketball, uh, boys and girls cross country, volleyball, cheerleading indoor and outdoor track, both male and female, uh, softball and baseball, tennis, both boys and girls, and golf, uh, just to name uh, some of the outstanding sports programs that we have here at Career High School. Well, Lorraine, I hope you got your question, and I hope career is a fit for you. Last but not least, do we get a tour as a freshman? I don't want to get lost. And this comes from an eighth grader over at Truman. Yeah, I think I believe you're at least over at Truman. Great question, right? Um, certainly high school is certainly big, uh, but Truman's a big school too. So I think if you could handle Truman, you could handle Hill Career Regional uh, High School. But uh, we do offer some opportunities for students, uh, in particular through uh, a program in the summer called the HEAD program. It's unique to career uh, in the district. It's a special program that invites freshmen on campus for about a week. Students would meet with teachers and peers, and during that time, they would get campus tours, um, and they really kind of get the experience of what it would like to be in some uh, abbreviated classroom-type settings. Um, and we're also looking to, if possible, of course, to be able to offer perhaps maybe some uh, virtual-type tour experiences okay. uh, for students that are brand new to the building. Certainly, uh, it is very helpful and, and helps students become engaged, and we certainly want all students to be here coming in ready to go and be successful. Thank you so much, Principal True. If you're looking to be a Panther, I suggest you check out Career. Check out their website, and you can also check them out at newhavenmagnetschools.com. Thank you. Thank you. Go Panthers. Our next guest on our show is going to be from Common Ground, Monica and Dayanera. Hi, guys. How are you? Hi, we're good. Great. Um, go ahead, Monica. Introduce yourself and tell us about Common Ground. Sure. Hi, I'm Monica Macherafoku, and I am the Executive Director of Common Ground. And Common Ground is a small public charter school. It's located at the base of West Rock State Park right here in New Haven. Okay. Um, but we're like a community that's dedicated to the environment and social justice. That's what Common Ground is about. We're a small school. We have about 230 students. So we know each other really, really well, and we care about each other a lot. Um, it's also a really diverse community. We have students from New Haven and lots of other towns, um, and students from backgrounds that really represent our community here in New Haven. And we are really committed to getting our kids ready for college success and mm -hmm. to be powerful environmental and social justice leaders like Dayanara. Um, so here at Common Ground, everyone is expected to be a leader, and then we can create portfolios of leadership throughout okay. our four years. Um, and all of our students take on big um, senior projects to that serve the community. Okay, cool. So it seems like Common Ground is a small, loving environment that likes to keep everyone engaged. We're going to dive into our first question, which I know you guys are both going to answer for me. <laughs> and the first question is, what makes your school special? So um, Common Ground is really focused on making sure that every student has multiple pathways and really explores what is their path to success after high school. Okay. Um, all of our students are prepared for college, and at the same time, we like them to explore all the 
different ways they can be successful here. Um, and we provide a ton of support, both for career development, as well as personal development that high school students really need to be able to fulfill their full potential when they um, leave high school. Sayonara, what makes it special to you? Um, what makes it special to me is that they offer the support and security of any other small school, but we have the resources of a bigger school. Yes. Um, we also have a very determined staff who helps our students find their callings and support them in following their pathways as well as see themselves as leaders, since it's hard as a teenager to view yourself as a leader. Um, they also, the school grows with you. So all the classes um, at the end of the semester are always giving an evaluation. And that's how we maintain all the classes from having relevant and real information that connects with the students. I think that's what makes it very special to me at least. Cool. Well, it seems like you love your school and you love what you guys do over there. Monica, we're going to jump to question two. What are we, are we going to be around animals? And this comes from Marcella over at Conti West Hills. I hope Marcella comes to Common Ground. So, you know, Marcella and a lot of you know, Common Ground is the place to come for field trips. And yes, we have a beautiful campus right at the base of the mountain with chickens and ducks and turkeys and sheep yeah. and we have new baby goats this year. Um, and our students have various relationships with the animals. Some students really love and want to get out there and, and work with the animals and spend time with them, and there are plenty of opportunities to do that. And some of our students, like Dianara, um, told me she didn't really like the turkeys, um, you know, come to Common Ground for other reasons. And, and um, so I think in all the grades, you will have opportunity to be with the animals, and all of our, cla all of our classes get outside at some point. Mm -hmm. um, but it, you can also vary how much you spend time with the animals based on your interests. Okay. Question number three. What are some careers that your alumni have gone into after graduating? So our alumni are powerful leaders for justice and sustainability. And between 95 and 100% of our students get into college. Okay. Um, and about 80% go to college right after graduation, which is a lot higher than the average across Connecticut. And they choose all sorts of paths. Actually, last week we had some of our alumni come back and teach our students what they've learned since graduating, which is amazing. I'm so, loving this alumni engagement across the district. Yeah. And just so a couple of examples, Jesus Reyes, who just graduated from the University of Maine, studied environmental science, and he's mm -hmm. passionate about fishing. A student who graduated from art school and is doing freelance work for Marvel Comics. Um, another student who is an artist and activist who's performed with Childish Gambino on SNL. Okay. So Common Ground students are encouraged to find their path to leadership. And then in that way, they go on to be amazing leaders in all different ways. You guys are pushing them over there. Question number four, do, you got, do students spend a lot of time outside? So all students at Common Ground do have some common core experiences that take them outside. Um, so we do like an all school hike every year. Our ninth grade class core classes are really focused on our campus and school community. So okay. there's a lot of outdoor experiences in that first year to really make common ground your own um, on our farm, in our you know on our hiking trails, etc. And then our tenth grade students actually spend time in our community outside common ground in the city of New Haven, meeting leaders and change makers. Mm -hmm. and so um, and then there's also a lot of obviously, obviously extracurricular and internship opportunities where they can spend more time outside. Cool. You guys at Common Ground got it going over there to be a small environment. I love it. And last but not least, Dan Aram, this is for you. What are some interests or skills students should have if they are interested in Common Ground? So there's no set criteria. You don't have to be a straight A student or be overly passionate about the environment. You just have to be willing to grow and accept others as well as be open to opportunities being offered to you. I came into Common Ground not knowing anything about the environment. And as Miss Monica said, I was terrified about the turkeys. Um, the thought of them waking me up in the morning with their squabblings terrified me. But I knew that Common Ground was going to see me and see my potential. And I wasn't just going to be another number. Like, yes. I was going to be like Dayanara. And they were going to see me as a leader, an advocate, a valued member of the community. And I really appreciate that. So. 
Great. I love you. Thank you for sharing your experience with us. We hope that people do decide to apply to Common Ground. You guys have a lot going on. We ask that you visit Common Ground website for more information and open houses. And you can also visit newhavenmagnetschools.com. See you guys soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're at the end of our show. Last but not least, we have Lauren here with us from Metro. Hi, Lauren. Hi, how are you? How are you? Good, how are you? Great, thanks. Good. Um, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself and give a synopsis about uh, Metro? Yeah, I would love to. So my name is Dr. Lauren Chikoski. I'm the Magnet Recruitment Coordinator at Metropolitan Business Academy. And Metro is an interdistrict magnet public high school in New Haven with about 400 students in grades 9 through 12 coming from over 15 different towns outside of New Haven. We are located on Water Street near Ikea. I'm looking over at it right now. And we are near uh, Worcester Square Park and all the pizza places, great restaurants and coffee shops. And uh, we are also located near the train station. I can see it from here, from our library. And uh, we do have a business theme. It's integrated throughout the curriculum, but students right. come here even if they're not particularly interested in that. Okay, so we have some questions that were asked about that were asked by eighth graders across the district. Our first question is, what is a typical day for a student at Metro? A typical day for a student at Metro um, in remote learning, at least, is that they check in with advisory between 830 and nine in the morning. And then they have four classes each day. Okay. They, they do have time with uh, just getting a lesson with their teachers. And then they have time to work on things alone or with their peers and teachers. Okay. We have advisory on Wednesdays, and but if we were in person, that looks a little bit different. Can I tell what you about that? Like in person, yes. Great. So in person, uh, we have an eight A B day block schedule that rotates. So every other day, you have your four A day classes and your four B day classes, and then uh, Wednesday, Monday through Wednesday, our day is seven forty to two o five. But on Thursdays, you have advisory each week. So that's a group of about twelve students, and that's at the end of the day. Uh, and then on Fridays, we dismiss at 12.30. So all of the classes are a little bit shorter. Oh, 12.30 Friday dismissal? So that's pizza for me. <laughs> um, question number two, what support, what support will this school offer me? And this comes from Tiana over at Bishop Woods. So um, whether it's remote or in person, our students are getting a tremendous amount of support. Okay. Um, so for Tiana and others, you can expect that your advisor will check in with you, see how you're doing. Your teachers will be offering a lot of feedback on your work and giving you multiple opportunities to improve your work to get a final grade because we are a mastery-based learning school. Um, our teacher are Teachers are also available for after-school tutoring and makeup work. Okay. So, again, that mastery-based learning model is... Um, throughout all of their classes and they can expect a lot of support there too. And I also just wanna quickly mention that we have, you get a guidance counselor, um, mm -hmm. a school librarian, there are guidance interns and a whole team of social work interns. So if you wanna talk with someone or meet with someone because you're stressed out or you have things on your mind that you wanna discuss, um, they're available, so. Well, it looks like Metro has the whole package deal for all the support you need, Tiana. Question number three, does MBA only specialize in business or are there other subjects that the school specializes in such as coding or technology? And this comes from Adele over at Clemente. Oh, so this is a great opportunity to mention all of our academic pathways. So um, we do have a business and finance pathway, but we also have digital media and technology, okay. law and political science and allied health and science. So you still get a, a little bit of business throughout all of them. So for example, if you go into the law pathway, you do take a business law class. If you're in the tech pathway, you do take an e-commerce entrepreneurship class and so on throughout all of the pathways. But um, as I mentioned earlier, students come here, not just for that. Um, in terms of coding or technology, we do have uh, programming, graphic design, infotech, animation. So you do get um, a bit of that coding and a lot of technology. Cool. Question number four, what are careers your alumni have gone into after graduating? I'm really excited about this question, actually. because I want to brag about our graduates. Yes. Um, we're very proud of them. 
Um, most of our graduates go into two-year and four-year programs in state and out of state, and some have gone into the military. Um, we've had two Gates Millennial Scholars come out of Metro, so we're very proud about that. Um, and our graduates have gone on to careers in environmental science, others in law and medicine, um, a number of physician assistants, a lot of PAs, yes. um, and they're going into advanced medical programs. Um, okay. One of our graduates even got hired by Apple, and they work on some top secret projects over there in California. Okay. So, um, so there's an array of careers that they've gone into. Oh, Metro has given us some greats over there. <laughs> Question number five, what is one of the most interesting classes your school offers? Um, I would take this question as an opportunity to to tell you not just about a pathway class, but you know, we have an African American and Latinx history course here. Okay. And um, that was established prior to the state mandating high school curriculum to include black and Latino history. So um, this course at Metro, uh, students enjoy, it takes a critical race theory approach in examining the history and present day realities of racism and their impacts on uh, black and Latinx people. So this course and all of our history courses, students get to choose research topics and um, research over time, writing, presenting their findings through round tables and a social justice symposium. And they're doing that college level writing as early as junior year. So okay. I think that's um, one of the many interesting classes that our school offers. Cool. Number six, does MBA offer computer engineering classes? And this was asked by Kevin over at John S. Martinez. Um, so I, I wouldn't say that our digital media and tech students are like designing and testing circuit boards necessarily, okay. but, but they're doing a lot of work in programming and robotics. So I, I mentioned earlier, we do have like multimedia productions, graphic design, infotech, research and development, programming, broadcasting, animation, film studies, e robotics, e-commerce, and entrepreneurship. So I think like if there's an opportunity for students to dive in deeper into a research topic of their choice, then computer engineering is what they could do. So it's about taking the opportunities in projects of your choice to do that sort of work. And we also have old computers we allow students to take apart for fun. Oh, that's cool. Well, you guys have a lot to offer our students. Question number seven, last but not least, what are some interests or skills students should have if they are interested in your school? I think that if you are interested in our school, then you will have an interest in our pathway elective courses. Um, and educational philosophy of master-based learning. Um, that is, you should be interested in business, finance, health, law, or technology. Um, okay. You should be excited about master-based grading and be given the opportunity to resubmit work and advocate for yourself. Um, you should be excited about joining after-school clubs and programs if you can. And you should want to work on public speaking if you want to be a better writer, if you want to enjoy reading. And if you want to learn how to enjoy math, then Metro really is going to be a good fit for you. Cool. Thank you for sharing, Lauren. You Metro has so much to offer. We hope when it's lottery season, our students are applying. To learn more about Metro, please visit their website. And you can also visit our website at newhavenmagnetschools.com. We hope to see you at our virtual fair. Thank you. Thank you for watching our TV show, Launch Into High School. I hope you enjoyed. For more information, visit us at newhavenmagnetschools.com or give us a call at 475-220-1430. Thank you for watching. Again, my name is Bria.